What is going on world? So in the last video we discussed that we were going to break down the results of the EEG reading. So in this video we're going to take you guys all through that. You already know my good buddy here Ben Switzer. He's uh, just killing things right now and his uh, true focus and motivate gaming is going amazingly well. So make sure you guys go check him out and we're going to look over the results of the EEG reading right now. All right, so we forgot to wrap up the video there after we did the brain scans with Heather, but uh, it's now, a, this is the second assessment, so it's been about a week and a half, about a week and a half, or maybe two weeks since we actually did the brain scans, and uh, Ben actually went and met up with Heather, and they com she completely broke it down for, uh, for Ben. So we're gonna lightly discuss it here for you guys, as well as just gonna cover it for me, so what did she tell you? So, uh Basically, what we identified was there was some downregulation of activity in executive functioning networks, um, and those are located in the forebrain. Um, so some examples would be the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, um, which is located approximately here in the forehead. Um, those are associated with uh, inhibitory control, um, as well as uh, working memory, um, and performs functions in down regulating very, a lot of excitement in the amygdala, which has to do with um, processing visual information and other sensory information. Um, what was really interesting was um, that it was consistent with the cognitive uh, results that we got from the battery that we did. Which is very, very interesting. So I don't think I broke down the battery for them. What is the battery exactly? It's kind of your not a guess or estimate, but taking the results from the, the, the tests that I did, right? That's right. Um, so what I'll do, I'll pull them up here. But that's interesting though. So from those little game tests that I did that took me about half an hour compared to the brain scans, there were similar results. Yeah, it's interesting that we were able to take EEG measurements, which is, uh, I would say, a more it, it, both measurements are extrapolations of brain activity, so it's almost like um, if you put your hand on the hood of a car, you can feel the vibration in the car. Um, what you're, you're not directly measuring the movement of the motor, but you know that it's running based on the, that vibration. And you might even be able to say, like, there's something, if you're a very experienced mechanic, you'd be like, yeah, there's something wrong. Um, here, and that's kind of what EEG mapping really does. Okay. As it takes um, electrical signals that indicate activity, and then you make judgments based on that information. Same thing with the games. What was really interesting is they're very different ways to measure, but we arrived at the same results. Interesting. Mm -hmm. um, so what I'll do. So I'm quite consistent. Have you guys seen results in other people where they're like completely different from each other? You're like, whoa! How does this even make sense? Or um, that would be a good question for Heather. Uh, I don't have as much experience in neuroimaging as she does, uh, but she has mentioned that sometimes different results mean different things. Okay. But here I'll I'll kind of show you um, how it works. Okay. So uh, as you can see here. We have some, some delta activity uh, here in the, in the cortex that's related to executive functioning. So this shows that there's um, an elevated level of delta wave activity there. And if you look, that's actually consistent with alpha and beta waves. You see these blue, uh, these blue areas? That shows that there's a down regulation of those wave types. And this is during um, an eyes closed focus. Um, so it shows that there's a little bit of problem with uh, mind wandering and if you look at your uh, at your cognitive uh, scores here you can go to things like um, deductive reasoning was one we identified as being related to the what are known as what's known as the Broadman area that you are experiencing that activity in okay. um, so that was consistent with our with our EEG results as well as verbal short-term memory so those were two areas where you scored a little bit lower um, and it's just consistent with what we see here on the brain scans. That's crazy. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. It shows a, f a few things. One being that the instruments we're using to measure cognition are very accurate. Mm -hmm. um, interpreting some of this other stuff is, yeah, is a bit so, out of my wheelhouse. Yeah. So just looking at this, like, what does it do you get 
the, did Heather get it? like she? Oh, this means this. Yeah. So we used um, a reference. I'll kind of I'll show you. Uh, this is a pretty good. Oh. Okay. So this is kind of like a map of general activity in the brain. So you see this yellow area that represents executive functioning. So that's reasoning, planning, judgment, inhibitory control. Um, motor functions, as you can see in pink there, they, they regulate um, motion, right? So when you're reaching out to grab something, that's an interplay of visual attention that kind of flows into the midbrain up here to act on it and then back down in a feedback loop. So the areas that we're targeting in this program very heavily are here in the executive functions. So especially here, Broadman area 45 is one that we're really targeting. So if you want to, if we want to go to that, we just look at Bro Broca's area 45. Okay, clinical significance, Asperger's and autism. So that has to do, like I was saying, with the regulation of the amygdala, which is processing st sensory information, but it's also processing um, the level of parasympathetic excitation. So your nervous system, how pumped you are, or how afraid you are, like that fight or flight, that's controlled by the amygdala. People with autism, they get overwhelmed by stimuli because the amygdala is actually enlarged, and then this part of the area, this area of the brain has less volume. So they literally aren't able to withstand that stimuli. That's why they get so locked into it. Mm. And there's actually good studies that have shown that focused meditation improves symptoms of autism. Let's see what else we've got. That's here. crazy. So some of the associated functions, language, uh, phonological fluency, speaking. Um, basically, this is basically bottom-up processing of language. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Expressing yourself emotionally. Attention. Yep. So this is pretty interesting. So this is consistent with um, the difficulty that you've been having with meditating in, in high stimuli environments. And it's consistent also with, if you look at your, the results here, and you look at your, your visual spatial processing is in the 87th percentile. It's quite high. So your ability to process visual information, but not even just, just perceive it, but to, under, to, but to manipulate it and understand it in more complex ways and how it relates to each other, is very high. Well, I'm interested to see how like, you know, four years of editing almost every day has changed me. Because I used to be very, I used to have a very good short-term memory. Mm -hmm. But I feel as things have gone on, it's like I've, I've lost that almost. Because it's like, yeah. I, I know I have this stuff recorded and documented, so it's like whatever, like, you know, just focus on what is next, you know yeah. what I mean? And that's reflected here in your episodic memory, which is in the 15th percentile. So what does this mean? Episodic memory is... Specific events, wow. That's crazy. Yeah, and if you look at, um, <laughs> this was another thing that Heather and I talked about with that in interpreting your scans. If we go, Sodic, boom, look at that. Right in the Broadman area that we were talking about. <laughs> so it's very precise, the measurements we've done. Wow. And it'll be interesting to see what the effects of this program will be on that area. So if you look at the scans here, you'll notice that Okay, you'll notice your alpha wave activity is suppressed here. So when you're doing a meditative technique, this turns red, essentially. Oh, dang, eh? And you want to basically continue to do that over and over and over again until the action potential thresholds of those neural networks have changed and become the path of least resistance. And then you're going to see this turn green as a baseline or even red if you really train a lot. Wow. So through all this, we should really see some changes. That's the idea. I sure hope so. Yeah. That's what I expect and that's yeah. what I see. Um, you know, even in myself, I was diagnosed several times in full clinical expert uh, examinations as being very significantly ADD. Um, and my brain scans reflect that I've essentially squashed um, those problems Damn. through the training. That's crazy, man. Yeah. Um, another thing that was kind of interesting was... So all this blue, is that a bad thing? Well, it's, it's not really bad. 
Um, so it reflects different types of activity. So you see here's beta 1. Um, that's 12 to 15 hertz. So that's a slightly elevated level of activity. Um, and you can see that here, you, this is your visual processing system back here. Um, and this is the same area that's implicated in my injury, by the way. And it has other language processing implications as well. You see that you have a high level of activity in your visual perception. This might be the eyes open task, and that's why. But then look, as you move even higher cycles, so the neurons are flying faster, even more activity. So you're just like a pretty intense guy. And then gamma is the highest level of activity that you hear, have here in like the temporal uh, lobes here. I'm not certain on how to interpret that. That would be a question for Heather as well. And maybe what we can do is we can all sit down together and we can go through this interpretation and cross-reference with her um, participating. Yeah. Because she, she understands this stuff so much better than I do. And then possibly get her supervisor yeah. to do it as well and do a video of that. Oh, yeah. Um, but I hope this is some content that you can use. No, definitely. This is great right now. All right, well, there you have it, world. That is the result of my brain scan. So as Ben mentioned there, you know, when we finish the whole program and we're going to go back with Heather, we're going to see the results between the two and we're going to get her to help break down. But as, as you guys saw there, like using different assessments, you can really figure out what's going on in here and you don't need to actually do EEG to figure out what you need to start working on to cognitively enhance yourself, right? You can do these kind of gamified tests and they reveal quite similar results. So that was amazing. Thank you so much for taking me through that. Again, uh, go follow Ben on Instagram. Go check out his website at True Focus. He's doing some amazing things here. And uh, we had to cut them out of the video, but some big stuff is happening with True Focus and uh, Motivate Gaming. So great news. It's awesome to hear it. Thank you so much for being on my channel again, Ben. My pleasure. Uh, honored to be working with you. Uh, this is one of the most fun things I've ever done in my life. So let's, just, <laughs> let's keep doing it, keep having fun and creating amazing scientific results and experimenting with that great brain of yours. <laughs> uh, I think the, the biggest results I've heard so far is you're an intense guy. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I heard both from you and Heather, and clearly the results show that. So now you guys know why I'm so crazy all the time. <laughs> all right, well, thank you guys so much. Make sure you go leave a comment for us and uh, go hit that like button on your way down there. I am the Hungarian experiment. So the neurons are flying faster, even more activity. So you're just like a pretty intense guy. Beta's idle fast. And so you have that intensity to your personality, which is cool. And it's not about, but it's about the intensity being chosen as opposed to driven. Yeah.